Hi there, and welcome to this course on the Cure Methodology with Lean Strategies International, LLC. My name's Cameron Hansen, and I'll be helping guide you through the course. The Cure Methodology is a powerful methodology that has been adapted from the Affinity Diagramming Technique for use as an individual or in team environments. Based on the concept of infinitizing information, the Cure Methodology gives you a simple four-step process that can be used in any brainstorming event. As with any course that Lean Strategies International LLC brings you, you will learn all the foundational information needed to test your knowledge with interactive quizzes and be challenged to go and apply your new skills. That's right, you will gain not only knowledge, but experience too. If you're in a career where you need to consolidate ideas, find common themes, build consensus, or organize the seemingly endless amounts of information you receive every day, the Cure Methodology is the tool for you. This simple tool can be used from the granular front lines to the high-level strategic planning environments. That's right, after learning how to use the Cure Methodology, you will want to use it anytime you're brainstorming or where brainstorming is required. With that in mind, check out the free previews in the course, look around at the description, and click on the enroll button and start finding the cure that will bring you solutions that ignite your power today. Welcome to this course on the Cure Methodology. Almost every project you will be involved in will in some way include some brainstorming. Brainstorming sessions are a powerful gateway to unlock solutions, make issues visible, prioritize actions, and bring experienced minds together. When individuals come together as a team, innovative ideas can be born. One of the struggles of being part of a powerful and productive brainstorming session is that they generate many great ideas and often reveal a large amount of issues. This can leave a group feeling overwhelmed. The wide array of ideas can be hard to organize, understand, validate, and act on. Worse yet, Many members of a team might leave feeling invalidated, unheard, or completely shut down. In this course, you will learn how you can affinitize ideas or use the CURE methodology to create unity amongst team members and discover underlying themes. You will find that this methodology is the most powerful method you will use when conducting any type of brainstorming. With that said, let's look at some logistics of the course to start. Like any other course with Lean Strategies International LLC, you will get information in comprehensive lectures, challenge your memory with a quiz, and be tasked with completing an actual assignment. This will help you experience all levels of learning with a listen and apply approach. With that said, let's get started discovering the cure for any brainstorming event and finding solutions that ignite your power. In almost every project, you will find brainstorming of some kind at some point in the project life cycle. Brainstorming sessions are a powerful gateway to unlock solutions, make issues visible, prioritize actions, and bring experienced minds together. When individuals come together as a team, innovative ideas can be born. However, 
One of the struggles of being a part of a powerful and productive brainstorming session is that they generate many great ideas and often reveal a number of issues as well. This can leave a group feeling overwhelmed. Oftentimes, the wide array of ideas can be hard to organize, understand, validate, and act on. Worse yet, many members of a team might leave feeling invalidated, unheard, or completely shut down. Before we can begin learning about the CURE methodology, we first need to understand its predecessor, the Affinity Diagram. In the 1960s, Mr. Jiro Kawakita began developing a powerful tool that today is part of the seven management and planning tools. The tool has coined the name, the Affinity Diagram. Affinity as a noun means similarity in features, characteristics, or other defined attributes. It suggests a relationship or a strong resemblance. Of course, we're all aware that a diagram is a simple drawing that shows the appearance, structure, or workings of something in a schematic representation. After breaking down those two words, it is much easier to understand what the affinity diagram is, a powerful tool that can be used by team members or individuals during a project, job, or any activity where themes or similarities need to be identified. The diagram itself makes the perfect analytical tool that teams can use to organize ideas into subgroups with common themes or relationships that have been revealed during a brainstorming session. Over the years, many different methods of using the affinity diagram have been developed and used. This process is often referred to as affinitizing information. This can be more simply stated as a process that a team or group of people uses to identify perspectives, thoughts, opinions, and insights from the group into common themes or key ideas. The CURE methodology has a very specific universal four steps that can be used to do this same thing. We hope that as you borrow from the CURE methodology, you will improve and innovate in such a way that meets your specific needs. You should do this with all tools that you use. As we alluded to earlier, the CURE methodology provides a simple and structured way for users to extract a large number of ideas from a group organize the ideas, as well as organize problems and possible countermeasures into a group, all while prioritizing and grouping key themes. If you're going to pull a group of people together for a brainstorming session, the CURE methodology is the method you'll want to use. The CURE methodology began as a simple four-step process to facilitate a brainstorming session and has since been used to assist in analyzing and grouping ideas generated from teams or group settings. It can be used to facilitate solution generation, identify categories for fishbone analysis or cause and effect analysis, or group themes in strategic planning. In short, Anywhere you need to find a theme, or better yet, a cure, the cure methodology should be used. While the affinity diagram is a powerful tool, the cure methodology transforms the tool into a methodology that can be used repeatedly with successful results. This is very important in both group and individual settings. You don't want to jump from three steps to four steps and then six step methods when you're facilitating a brainstorming session. Structure and consistency without restrictive elements helps people get results time and time again. As a means of standardizing the affinity diagram, we created a mnemonic so that anybody could lead a brainstorming session while systematically and effectively gathering ideas, data, and thoughts in a simple format. That mnemonic, as you know, is CURE. 
Each letter represents a step in the methodology's process. So, how is the CURE methodology conducted? The CURE methodology is performed in four steps. Communicate. The facilitator will ask a question so everyone can provide input and or ideas. The next step, understand, gives everyone a chance to understand what your input is and write it down. It is important that all ideas are written separately. For example, one idea on one sticky. Then reveal. Each participant will take turns placing their ideas where everyone can see. They then explain their ideas in a preset amount of time. Team members can take notes but should not reject or disapprove any ideas. In the last step, members of the group will evaluate all the ideas and begin placing them in groups based on a common theme or relationship. After the ideas have been grouped, they are labeled. Each theme should be labeled with a name and consensus confirmed. Now that we have looked at an overview of the four steps, let's test our knowledge and then look at why someone would use the CURE methodology before finally looking at each of the four steps a little closer. We'll see you in the next lecture. To start, you need to consider everyone's style of communication, but not allow the step to be paralyzed too deeply with long discussions, extensive thinking, or off-topic remarks. In the communication phase, you can begin by handing some items out to everyone. Each individual should have something to write on and something to write with. We like to use a Jamboard because it is easy to facilitate and can be used over and over again. If you're not familiar with this powerful tool, some other options are stickies and markers. You will also need a timer. Once everyone has something to write with and something to write on, you will want to ensure that you have a canvas such as a wall, whiteboard, or even a desk that the stickies can go on once complete. We will discuss more about this in later steps. Before communicating the topic or questions that everyone will focus their thoughts on, it is a good idea to establish a time limit for each of the four stages. For example, if you need to have a quick brainstorming session, then five minute rounds is a good place to start. If you have a little more time than that, 10 minutes may work. Keep in mind that you do not want too long of a session as it is always a good goal to just get started. With that said, your team will need to agree on a time limit for each round. Once this is done, the facilitator will then communicate the topic or question of the brainstorming event. We will use an example to illustrate each phase of the CURE methodology for you. In our example, the question we will work with is, what do we want to have for dinner on Saturday night? Before you move on to the next phase, be sure everyone understands the topic or question you will be addressing. You may want to try the following suggestions. Write the topic or question where everyone can see it, or allow people to write down the topic or question on a sheet of paper as a reminder. After you have communicated with everyone, you are now ready to move on to phase two of the CURE methodology. Understand. We'll see you in the next lecture. Once you have communicated your theme or topic for your brainstorming session, the work begins. It is very important that after communication you do not allow ideas to be called out or members of the team to influence each other. 
The understand phase gives users time to express their own thoughts before they are revealed. While other phases of brainstorming are more vocal and interactive, the understand phase is best done quietly. In the understand stage, users will write down each of their ideas. For example, one idea on one sticky. The goal here is for team members to write down everything they can think of. Remember, no idea is a bad idea. While there is no limit to the number of ideas a participant can write down, it is sometimes a good idea to remind the members of the team that there is a time limit that everyone agreed on. Once the time is up, writing tools will need to be put down. Let's look at our example to understand a little better. In the communication phase, we presented a question. What do we want to have for dinner on Saturday night? Our team has agreed on a 10 minute time limit for the understand phase and have written this question where everyone can see it. The facilitator says go and everyone begins writing down one idea on one sticky. Remember, when the time stops, everyone must put their writing tools down. While the team is writing, the facilitator or leader can establish a parking lot area that will be used in the next phase of the CURE methodology. As time expires, the facilitator can direct everyone in the team to put their writing tools down and prepare for the reveal stage of the CURE methodology. With that said, let's move on to the next lecture and learn more about what teams will reveal. The next step of the CURE methodology is for each individual to reveal each of their ideas. In this step, each member of the group will place their ideas in front of everyone and share what they feel prompted to. Remember that some people may be visual while others might need to listen to an explanation. In addition to this, many people are extroverted while others are more introverted. With that in mind, in the reveal phase of the CURE methodology, everyone should be sensitive to each other's ability to communicate their ideas. Because we have different learning styles, we must do the best that we can to ensure that everyone's needs are met to the best of their ability. With that being said, one participant is selected at a time. They can take their idea and place them in an area that is visible to everyone. Once the ideas are visible, each participant should get a set amount of time to explain their stickies. Please note that if all the stickies are not explained, that is okay. Once the participant's time to explain each of the stickies is up, some time should be given to the group to, for clarification questions. This is important in any type of brainstorming so that everyone can understand the idea that is being presented and can later in the evaluation step group each of the ideas appropriately. Two important questions that should be answered for the group in this step are, what is the idea and why did I share this idea? Once everyone has shared their ideas, you will then be ready to move on to the final stage of the process. But before we do, let's look at our example again for a deeper understanding. When we last left off, everyone was writing down their ideas in the understand phase. In our example, we will reveal with one person. When you conduct your cure methodology project, be sure that you give everyone an opportunity to reveal. Katie gets called on to reveal her ideas. She has 10 minutes to share what the idea is, why she shared it with the group. As she explains each of her ideas, she places them in an area where they are visible to everyone. In keeping with a one-piece flow function, Katie shares one idea then asks if anyone has any questions. If they do, the questions are answered and she moves on to the next idea. 
You can follow Katie's example of one piece flow, or you can present all of your ideas and then answer the questions in a batch format. Katie's ideas are shown here, mixed in with her other team members' ideas too. As you can see, by this example, everyone's ideas are revealed and questions are answered so that people can understand the ideas. The next step in the process is to begin grouping and labeling each of these ideas in the evaluation phase. We'll see you in the next lecture. In the last phase of the CURE methodology, team members will evaluate all the ideas scattered on the wall and begin to group and label each idea based on common themes and confirm consensus with regards to the groupings. A simple way to get started is to look for ideas that are almost or are identical and group those ideas together. By doing this, you begin to establish a theme or a category right from the start. After identical stickies have been grouped, then you can start putting similar ideas together. This is why it is important to give team members time to explain what their ideas are in the reveal stage, because it makes evaluation easier and more efficient. Grouping should be done at a reasonable rate and based on gut instinct. Deep analysis is not used when grouping, although quick analysis may be necessary in some cases. Labeling each of the groups can be done in a one-piece flow fashion or in a batched approach. One-piece flow, for example, a label is selected from the labels that are spread across the wall. If the label does not have another that is identical, Place it away from the other ideas and add a relevant label to define a category, theme, or grouping. For example, if you were to pick up the spaghetti sticky in our example, you may label that group as pasta. Then grab another idea and look at the groupings that you have already established. Ask yourself, does this fit into any of the groups I have already done? When batching, you should grab one idea, give it a label, and look for other ideas that fit under this label. Here are a few other things to keep in mind as you label your groups. During the labeling, it is okay to change an idea to another group. In addition to changing an idea to a new group, sometimes a new group label will pop into somebody's mind. Discuss the new label idea with your group. Try to keep in mind even if no ideas are placed under the new label, creating it may still help validate someone's thoughts and can be a possible theme as team members mull over the various suggestions. If and when you come across an idea that you are having trouble understanding, move it off to your parking lot and revisit the idea later. You can also place outliers or ideas that are not relevant in the parking lot. Let's look at our example again. As you can see, the team has placed each of the dinner ideas into a group. Before the grouping, there are 24 points of data that were submitted. That would be a lot of different dinners for anyone to make. After grouping the ideas into themes, the team has narrowed the ideas into categories. There are now six categories and one outlier that was placed in the parking lot. This makes decision making much easier for everyone. It also makes gaining consensus easier, analysis much easier, and identifying common themes a lot easier. It is important to note that the slide shows all of the ideas placed into categories. However, labeling is much more efficient when done as you go, not in a batched manner. This will make the path to the cure much more efficient. When labeling a group, you want to try and include everyone. However, 
it is not absolutely mandatory. Since labeling is done in parallel with grouping, there are two common methods that you can take to label your group ideas. The first is to use a facilitator. The facilitator can work with the group to establish consensus and then label. It should be noted that if you use a facilitator, they should be experienced in leading a team and or understand how to use the CURE methodology. The second method is to have members of the group establish their own categories. This method can be tough to use in the beginning, but is also more effective when teams learn to work together and share ideas. Once you have all your ideas in a group and labeled, you should now see and be able to analyze your information much easier. In the next lecture, we will summarize the process before moving on to your capstone project. We'll see you in the next lecture. As you can see, we went from asking a question to having six different categories that we can now choose from. As taught earlier, the CURE methodology helped us to make sense of the large amounts of data that were suggested, gain consensus, and gave us some great feedback with regards to the problem we were trying to solve. Remember, the CURE methodology can be used in many different ways. This is only a starting point for you. Like Lean Strategies International LLC, as you use this method and gain more experience, you will find ways that you can innovate the tool. We only ask that you share your innovations and suggestions with others so that we can all improve every day. Now, let's talk through the entire process in our summary. To start, we decided we wanted to apply the CURE methodology to narrow down the seemingly impossible options for dinner. We first communicated the question, what do we want to have for dinner on Saturday night? We also made sure that everyone understood the question. Then, we gave the team members time to understand or define their ideas. Remember to keep all ideas separate from one another. When time expired in the understanding phase, we then moved into reveal phase where each participant came to the front and shared each of their stickies with the group. Remember that during this time, it is important to answer two questions. What is the idea? And why did I share the idea? After everyone's ideas have been revealed, evaluation can then begin. In the evaluate phase, team members group the ideas and then label each of the groups for further analysis or decision making. Remember, this is a high level summary of the CURE methodology, but you can always return to the previous lectures and look at the details of each phase. In the next section, you will be challenged to go and use the CURE methodology. With that said, Let's move on to the next lecture. Welcome to an overview of your capstone project. After learning everything you need to begin using the CURE methodology, now it's your turn. That's right, you're going to complete a project using the CURE methodology on your own. In your final project, you will take the knowledge you have acquired throughout the course and apply it to something real. This activity will be a sort of case study as you will be required to share it with others. As a reminder, you will need to first find something to apply your cure to. 
Some common situations you may consider using the CURE methodology on are when you are conducting a brainstorming event, analyzing qualitative or verbal data like surveys, conversations, or emails, collecting and analyzing large data sets, or when finding, developing, or discovering themes, categories, and relationships. Finally, you can use the CURE methodology when you are consolidating information, attributes, or details that will need to be addressed at a higher level of your organization or anywhere you're looking for a group. We will look at the instructions in your capstone assignment after this overview. To start, you will first need to select a situation to apply the CURE methodology to. If you are not able to apply your new tool in a work environment, try applying it at home. You can gather everyone together and ask a general question like, what does everyone feel like for dinner tonight? What are we going to do this weekend? Or, if you were going to buy a new car, what features would you want? You can also benchmark or ask someone for an idea to apply your new tool to. As a courtesy, please make sure that you reference any sources that are not yours. The objective is to go and do. We want you to go and apply the techniques that you have learned so that you can gain experience. After you complete your CURE project, be sure to load it in the portal for everyone to see. The instructions will outline the steps that you need to take to complete your capstone project. Now that you have a good overview of the capstone, let's get started with the instructions. Now it's time to get started with your capstone project. In this assignment, you will answer five questions and turn in some photos of you using and completing a project with the CURE methodology. The five questions you will need to answer are, what topic or question did you communicate in phase one of the CURE methodology? After the reveal phase, how many ideas or data points were created? After the evaluate phase, how many themes, categories, or groupings were created and what were they? After you answer these first three questions, then we will ask you to convert your template and upload it in question number four. In the last question, we would like to know if there was one thing you could teach someone about the CURE methodology, what would you teach them? Once you have completed and answered these five questions and turned in your template, your project is complete. In the next section, you can review the example that you read about in the course. This example, however, will show the answer to the five questions and the completed template for the dinner example that you read about during the course. Now, go and conquer your capstone project. Hi there, and thank you for completing your capstone project. In this section, you will find five example answers that you can review. Keep in mind that because you are being asked to complete a project, there is no right or wrong answer. The goal is for you to go and use this new tool and continue gaining experience. Completion of the capstone project will help you as you continue to innovate the CURE methodology. With that said, please review the sample answers before moving on to the next lecture.